The ability to have bacon anytime you want. Bacon that is easy to breed. Composting the ability to clear land. My name is Bo Brotherton and that's what we're going over today is the five mistakes to avoid when raising pigs either on pasture or what we do in the forest. And definitely stay to the end because I'm gonna give you a bonus mistake that we messed up so bad. But before, look at these piggies. Missy just gave birth probably about three days ago to five strong, healthy pigs. So we raise Idaho pasture pigs here on our farm. And there was a reason why we ended up choosing to do Idaho pasture pigs. The biggest one was that we have five kids and we wanted a nice, sweet, docile breed so that our kids could be able to work with them. I'll show you in a bit. Bill, our boar, he is just the sweetest thing. Any pigs will still be able to eat you alive. Hence the expression, as greedy as a pig. But the Idaho pasture pig was bred so that they were nice, sweet, gentle, and they're, they grow a little bit longer than the bigger pigs, but it's still a perfect quality homestead pig. All right, the first mistake you wanna avoid is not having proper water procedures, mainly for Southern climates, because we're down here in Central Texas and we're hitting 100 degrees already and it's just early June. And definitely, definitely, we have to make sure that our pigs have enough water. Really what you want whenever you're in a Southern climate is you wanna make sure that your pigs have a wallow. They don't sweat through their skin and they need a way to cool themselves down. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you the two systems that we use for water. We just do the standard bins. It's not what we like, it's not the favorite, but here in the heat, we just wanna give them a lot of water. And the second is of course the standard pig waterer in a 55 gallon drum with a nipple right there so that they can get free choice water at all times. All right, the second mistake you wanna avoid is not having adequate shelter and housing from the elements. I'm gonna share with you the three type of housings that we have, but really the number one thing that we've learned. Uh, I was out there in the sun. Unfortunately, that's where we had to build Missy's pen whenever she had the piglets. We're gonna move her soon. But now that I'm in the shade, you can see I am under a canopy right now, and it has gotta be 10 plus degrees difference here in the forest. There is big boy Bill. He is just happy as can be. That's the best thing, is if you can put them in the forest, that is the best way to get out of the elements. All right, so this is the very first shelter that we built whenever we first started raising pigs. Basically, all it is is you just take whatever you have on the farm and you stack it all together and you just scrap stuff together and you make a little hut. <laughs> uh, so this is what the older piglets are sleeping under and they don't mind it that much. We basically just took some shipping crates stacked them together, put some screws, found any kind of scrap of metal or any corrugated roofing that we have. I even have an IBC tote over there to like give a little bit more stability. And this thing is held up for about, you know, 18 months. It's been a, a good uh, lifespan for this. And they sleep in it every single night. We throw bedding under there and they move it all around and make it comfortable however they want. I just ended up putting some extra stuff through there to kind of give them uh, a break from the wind during the winter if there was ever a big storm. It is ugly, but it does the trick. It doesn't have to be pretty. Now, I am gonna show you here in a second, number two and number three, and I do love number three, basically because it costs a little bit more money, but it was the best thing that we could do in not having reaction farming, what we call it. Reaction farming is a, a storm's coming, you got piglets, you need to build a hut. This is something number three and number two a little bit that are easy to do. So we're back over here where Bill is. I'm gonna show you the second house. This is basically just cattle panels cut in half. So this is a 16 foot cattle panel cut in half and we just put some T-posts in there. There's a T-post right there and basically it's just a little hoop. So it's two of these that are bent 
over. It's just two different panels. You can see under here. You see that extra panel, that second panel right there. And it just gives them a little bit of shade and protection from the elements here under the forest. All right, now we're back in the sun because the sun's setting. This is the third one, by far our favorite. This Porta Hut, we just found a local store in uh, near Dallas. And this is the best thing. This thing is easy to move. It is fantastic. It is built like a tank. It's got an opening right there so that you can get some extra airflow. But I wish, wish, wish that we had something like this in the winter whenever Missy was having babies in the winter time. Cause this thing is just awesome. Okay y'all, mistake number three that you wanna avoid is not having sufficient fencing and containment. I'm gonna share with you how we do our pig paddocks. Really for uh, number five, you're gonna be talk I'm gonna be showing you our uh, electric fencing. That's good, but I'm gonna kinda, they're gonna merge here in number three. So this is kind of a fast paddock that we did and it's, it's minimum. We're going to extend it that way. It'll give her more shade and a little bit more space. We just had to do this fast because we were behind. So this panel, you can just get this at Tractor Supply. Both, basically everything we buy is pretty much at Tractor Supply. This is just a hog panel. So a hog panel is different from a cattle panel. It has tighter bottom uh, wires here gaps so that the little piggies can't get through. And so what you do is you put three posts per panel. So you go one, two, three. On that side, it's one, two, three. On that, the back side is one, two, three, one, two, three. So you wanna go ahead and make those all nice and tight. Then you really wanna make sure that each of these panels have a wire in as well. Missy is pretty trained here to the place, so she's used to this, but if you get a new pig that is not used to your place, you definitely wanna make sure that they are contained. Cause I have seen a pig push through uh, a little gap here because they did not tighten this. This actually needs to be tightened a little bit more. So this is a mistake that I'm doing right now, but I'm not too worried about Missy, she stays wherever she is. So this is how you make a pin. Then what you would do in order to train them to electric fencing is you would put one or two strands of the same color hot wire that you're gonna use whenever you put them over in your paddock shifting. We use white electric wire and you would just have a wire that comes on the inside because what you know is this hog panel is a physical barrier. They cannot get through. But then when you see the electric wire, this is a mental barrier. A mental barrier, a physical barrier. So Bill, he's the best train. He is always super calm. He doesn't ever challenge this because he doesn't want to get shocked. And what we've learned is a actual plugged into the wall AC powered electric fence charger is way more powerful than a solar one. So especially for pigs, we don't rely on solar power. We plug it straight into the wall and it gets hot. Man, if you zap yourself, it hurts. All right, mistake number four that you need to avoid is neglecting their hygiene and health. Now, pigs are tough. They are super, super tough animals, but it doesn't mean that you need to just think that they're gonna take care of themselves. All of these mistakes are all gonna work together. You definitely need to make sure that you're mucking the paddock if they're in a pen, like two sets of our pigs. Bill is out here rotating. The pigs, it's not like a cow. Cows are just gonna poop everywhere, it doesn't matter. Pigs are gonna poop and pee in one specific spot. Wherever you move them, they're gonna locate where they want their bathroom to be, and they are going to stay right there. So you, it's easy to muck it up. Just clean it up, it's a piece of cake. Make sure you do that so that they are nice and clean and healthy. You also wanna make sure that they're getting a balanced feed, kitchen scraps. Uh, we give them basically any kind of kitchen scraps, except we don't give them like avocado pits, 
or any kind of other fruit pits. We separate all of those things from the pig bucket, that as well as we don't give them coffee grounds. And then for pigs, when in doubt, especially Idaho pasture pigs, give them more hay. The fifth mistake you wanna avoid is lack of rotational grazing. All right, I'm gonna show you a highlight of this current paddock rotation for our pigs. So we're embracing these hooks so that it's easy to move them from one location to the next, one paddock to the next. I don't wanna to touch this because it is super duper hot. So, and then we also have these little hooks that just go into a T-post. You can just get all this stuff at Tractor Supply. It's super easy to set up. So you wanna make sure that your hot wire is not touching anything. So sometimes you gotta come through here and you gotta cut all this down. So as you can see, they have really cleared and they have just cratered things out all around. And what we need to do, it's just gotten really hot, is come back over here and clear more of this up and then reseed behind them. Here's another one. So we have these hooks right here. So they were able to go from paddock number one. We opened this gate, they went to paddock number two. Then what I realized, I made a mistake, I need hooks here too. Cause then that way we can take them from paddock number two to paddock number three is gonna be over here. We haven't gotten them to this spot after build that line. Currently we only have the two lines. But I love this little thing right here. It is a piece of cake. It makes things, it's a little bit more expensive. It is well, well worth it. Sometimes you have a line that you need to get off of something. These are just these little hooks that you can get a tractor supply and you just take this little guy and you like, ooh, something happened. I didn't like that. It got some kind of electrical charge with the camera or something. But you can just screw this into a tree and then that keeps your line off of a tree. So that is the five main mistakes that you want to avoid. I'm going to give you one more bonus because it was a little bit of a pain. It wasn't a pain, it was sad. So a little real homestead talk. Um, we have our three big piglets here. This was Missy's last litter of piglets. We had two boys and two girls. So I knew that, um, and they were not very good breeders. So I knew that we were going to have to castrate the two males because neither of them were breeder quality. Life just hit and we waited too long and um, I castrated them too big. They, it, it was, this was probably like a month ago. So it's still fresh. Uh, the orange one here, the brown one, he did okay. He did good, he healed up. But we had another one. It was, uh, unfortunately, it was Ollie's favorite pig. He was really attached to this pig and he called him Lightning and but he, he, he just didn't heal up. I don't know what happened. It was my first time castrating. Evidently, I did something wrong. I'm not sure what. It was my first time castrating. And uh, you, know, you go, you take the slits, and you, you pop the testicle out, and you grab it, and you're supposed to just pull it out. I, I don't know. He, he didn't heal up. I could tell that he was limping. He had like this big old gorge. If you're, if you're squeamish, don't watch this. If you can just turn away, listen to it if you want to learn this, uh, or you can just skip the video and just leave now. But um, he was swollen on his backside where the, where the castration happened. I don't know if it got infected. I'm not sure. We ended up giving him antibiotics, and it seemed like that healed up a little bit. It took him three weeks, and then uh, we, we got up one morning, and his back legs wouldn't work. He couldn't move at all. And we, we tried to give him a fighting chance. And then um, he would still eat. And we just were hoping that pigs are tough, that they'll, they'll heal up. And, but the moment that he wouldn't drink and he wouldn't eat, we knew that he was suffering. And it was just something that our kid was attached to him. So I know that you can't have livestock without dead stock. And we've butchered so many animals here on the property that I, it, I'm sort of uh, used to it, but this one hit hard. This one sucked. Um, this one made me want to quit. I, if it wasn't for Missy being pregnant with another set of piglets, 
I probably was going to get rid of all the pigs. It would have been fine. I would have been fine with it. I just would have called it quits and said, nope, I don't want to do this anymore. That would be my bonus mistake to avoid is uh, waiting too long to castrate your male piglets. Just go ahead and do them early. Like basically what I'm going to be doing is if, if they have to fit on my lap, that's the size, you know, about this big so that I can grab them, someone can hold them, and then we can do the little slits. They were so big, the testicles were, uh, this is gross, man, this is gross, but they were too mature. Hey, let's get positive. Since you like this video about pigs, I got another video right up there about raising pigs on pasture. Check it out, you're gonna love it.